Howdy my friends. Today I'm going to show you start to finish how to make a college style cutting board and today I've, I've got some glued up maple and cherry. I wanted it to be a lighter cutting board so I um, left out the walnut this time and just did cherry and maple. I get out my DeWalt uh, planer and I run this wood through the planer probably like 10 times on each side and get it nice and smooth. Once it's nice and smooth, I take it over to my table saw and I need both pieces to be exactly the same so that I can, when I'm running my CNC machine, I don't get, um, the dimensions are perfect. So I clamp it up to my uh, square and I proceed to cut these down and make them nice and square. One of the things I realized working with a CNC machine is the dimensions. So if you if you want to batch stuff out and have it come out really nice, keep all your dimensions exactly the same. And right here you can see I'm using some digital calipers. These are some new ones that I got, Nyko. Okay, next up we come over here to Aspire and we create a new file. Now this is critical. You, you need to have your dimensions perfect. So right here on our board, we use the calipers. We got 11.5580. And on our height, we have 10.0300. And on our thickness, we have 1.75. 85. Now we're going to do a standard V carve so we can use this, leave this at the zero position, the bottom left corner, top of material, standard, and we'll hit OK. And there's our material. Now I have a logo that I downloaded and it's right here. It's a UCLA. And this is a Thanksgiving Day project for myself, and I'm going to do this UCLA bear for my daughter, who graduated UCLA and is doing really well. So right there, I'm going to leave that highlighted. I'm going to go over here to the little bird, and we're going to do a trace bitmap. And we're going to leave it black and white because that's how I brought it in. And this should be pretty easy. I shouldn't have to get rid of too much like the last one. And we'll go ahead and close that. Now we'll delete the original image, and there's our traced bitmap. Now we're going to zoom in here, and we're going to get rid of a few things. So first I'm going to highlight it and ungroup the objects, and then I'm going to get rid of stuff, get rid of some little details that I, I think will probably bother it. You could leave that stuff, you could get rid of that thing. Basically what I do is I just zoom around and kind of declutter it. It's not too bad though. It doesn't have too much bad stuff in it. Okay. Now let's group, group it back together. Group objects. Now let's see about our size. This thing needs to be a little bigger. So let's highlight it. And we need to make sure it's in the center. So we're going to go up here and use our alignment tool and hit center. And you can see it moved a little bit. And I believe that's pretty nice right there. So we're going to close that. And I don't know that I need these guys right here. So let's ungroup this again. And let's get rid of a couple of these little things here. Okay. UCLA, that looks pretty good. Okay, let's regroup this back together. Group objects. Now we're going to go. Oh, we need. Uh, we're going to put a juice catcher around this thing. So we need to create a rectangle, and the width. We need to make sure we got our dimensions right. So eleven point five five eight zero by ten point zero three hundred, and let's create and close. We'll go ahead and highlight that, 
go to our alignment tool right here, center it. And there we go. And now we're going to offset that inwards. And I'm going to put it at 0.65. Recently I've been doing them at 0.5, but it seems a little close to the edge. So I'm going to try this and offset. And then we'll hit close. And then we can delete this outer, outer one. And th that's our cut path right there. That's all we need. So let's take a look at it. We're going to go over to the toolpath. Let's highlight the V-carve. Go up here to hit V-carve. And we're going to leave the 0 0.04 start depth because that seems to cut a little nicer. And then we'll go ahead and write our tool down here, 1502. And I'll show you a picture of that bit right here. And we'll hit Calculate. And that did OK. Let's preview this visible toolpath. That looks pretty good. Although the B down here, it looks like I'm... So I'm going to change the start depth. So let's delete this file. Sometimes if you go too deep, it um, will reset the preview, close that. Go back to the 2D view. We're going to go back to the V-car, but we're going to do zero start depth. And we're going to go back here and see how that looks. The nice thing about Aspire or Vectric is to be able to preview these toolpaths. They're pretty accurate. Now that did a lot of, little better. See how the B is a lot bolder there? So we're going to leave this at this and hope this we can always leave it in the machine and recut it deeper if we need to, but I think this looks pretty good. So let's give this a try. Okay. Um, the next thing we need to do is the juice cutter. So we'll go back to the 2D view, undo that, highlight the juice catcher, go over here and right up here, you'll see one that says fluting toolpath. So we're going to click on that. Now I was originally doing quarter inch deep. Uh, juice catchers, but I realized that if I do an eighth inch, they look a lot better. And right here, we're going to use a ball nose 1404. And all this will say the same. We'll put the tool path in here, 1404. And let's hit calculate. Preview all. And there's the little juice catcher. So there's our cutting board, exactly what it's going to look like. Okay, let's take this over to the machine and let's make a UCLA cutting board. I'll see you over there. The first thing I do is home out the machine and I already had the V-bit in, number 1502. So I do the XYZ and then I, actually the first thing I do, I take that back. I run a fluting toolpath on both of these cutting boards and now I'm using the 1502 to cut the inside and this one right here is the UCLA one with a bear. UCLA Bruins with a little bear. And this is going to be a gift to my daughter who graduated UCLA. I'm really proud of her. And I did another one at the same time, a UC Irvine one for my other daughter who graduated UC Irvine. And I'm very proud of both of them. Right here, I'm mixing up the epoxy, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio using um, Super Clear. And I'm going to do both of these cutting boards in a blue epoxy, because that's kind of the color of the college logo. And I thought it would turn out really nice, actually. You keep your room temperature at 70 degrees and then mix your epoxy for approximately five minutes always scraping the sides of your cup and you'll get a successful it'll turn out good every time i try not to put too much because if you put too much on there then you're just sanding off that much more the next day and i let it dry I torch them, get all the air bubbles out. The next day I put some 600 grit on my little Makita sander. I got the Dust Right Dust Collection hooked up to it. 
and we're going to sand these out. You want to watch your logo the whole time when you're sanding because you don't want, if you sand too far you could you could lose some of your detail. So I've been um, I've been learning that yeah I keep an eye on that and they and you really can they can come out really nice. Once I get them sanded with the 60 grit, I switch to I switch to some 100 grit and then I switch to some 220. I then take my little porter cable router and I route around a little quarter round around the top and the bottom. I then get back and sand any burn marks off the sides from the table saw. Do a little hand sanding where there's burn marks. Clean that all up. I then get my dust right dust collection and clean off my workstation. Next up it was time for a little oil and this is a food grade mineral oil that I use on these cutting boards I'm really happy with it I'll leave a link in the description and there's the UC Irvine one if you're interested in a custom cutting board with your college logo or any kinda logo on it these particular cutting boards I can ship out for about seventy five dollars and that's free shipping and they're really nice. They make a nice Christmas gift. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, and I will see you next time. Later.